October 31st, 2011. That's the day the world is expected to reach 7 billion people. At least that's the projection of the United Nations Fund for Population Activities. What does a world of 7 billion plus mean for people and the planet? What new pressures will Australia face? How will it be changed? And what kind of world will our children grow up in? Seven UNSW experts canvassed the big issues. Firstly, in the developed world, we have people now, which we didn't have in earlier eras, living to 80, 90 or 100. And people at that age accumulate a lot of chronic illness and disease. That requires a massive health system devoted to this. And the cost is very large. In developing countries, about half the world's population lives on $2.50 a day or less. There's grinding poverty for 900 million people. 27,000 children die each day of poverty. 10 million a year. All countries in the world will face the, uh, face the challenge of population ageing. It's happening everywhere. In Australia, though, uh, we're fortunate because many countries are older than we are. Uh, relative to countries like Germany or Japan or Italy, uh, Australia's a teenager. More people means a greater demand on resources and opportunities and on wealth. It means more people trying to get somewhere to meet their aspirations. To get there, we need order, we need civility, and unfortunately, it means more regulation and more law. And that, of course, means more lawyers. So a glimpse of Australia's future is, for better or for worse, far more regulation, more re regulatory authorities and institutions, and a greater impact on the way we behave with each other determined by law. Access to fresh water in Australia, driest inhabited continent, is incredibly difficult. And we're seeing the impacts of overuse of water, water resources, particularly in places like the Murray-Darling Basin. And that sort of pressure is only going to increase as Australia's population inc increases, but obviously as the world's population increases. Australia is already a net importer of food. Only 6% of Australia's total land area is arable, so um, uh, you're able to grow food on it. To dam uh, northern Australia for, to increase food production um, is probably not the, the best strategy. I think it would be far quicker and far more efficient to develop what Australian cities are already doing at very local levels, which is uh, urban food production. As the population approaches 7 billion people, it means that all of our waste products are also growing. And one of those waste products is carbon dioxide. The pollutants that we're putting in are going to take hundreds of thousands of years to be cleansed away by natural processes. And what we're putting into the atmosphere really constitutes an unprecedented experiment with our planet that is going to lead to changes that haven't been seen in millions of years. Our sunshine alone is enough to power all the uh, energy demands of our country um, as it is at the moment and well into the future. We have potential not only to, to export the actual energy itself but to export the technology for collecting and converting energy as well from renewable reserves. So we have an abundance to power ourselves and the potential to help power the rest of the world. We can't solve the seven billion problem overnight, but surely we can do, be doing better for our cousins, brothers and sisters in the third world. That would be my plea.